And thank you, uh, Dr. Furman, for being here um, and following up on the report. And, you know, it's interesting to me because uh, some of the numbers you cited and uh, that the other site, uh, side often cites in terms of numbers and the economy's back on track. Um, we've had the fastest, we've had the best, and we've had records. Now, here's another number that I think is really critical. Um, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics announced that for all of 2015, all of last year, uh, that uh, uh, we had U.S. productivity, labor, labor productivity rose only 0.6 percent. Mm -hmm. So this is the fifth year in a row where that growth has been below 1 percent. So since, uh, since the U.S. started collecting this data, going back all the way to 1947, uh, up until now there has never, ever been such a poor five-year stretch because we've had five years in a row where it's been below 1 percent. So knowing that's the case, this is really important, uh, the link between increases in labor productivity and the average U.S. standard of living. Uh, one example now estimates, uh, for instance, because of the annual increases in labor productivity of 3 percent, uh, if you had 3 percent, the average standard of living would double in just about 20, 24 years here in the United States. But now if you compare that to the last five years we've had with low productivity growth, we've actually changed it where the average standard of living won't be doubled until every 139 years. So 139 years to double our standard of living. So these are numbers, I think, that are behind what many people feel or sense. They feel it's the disappearing of the American dream. And it's probably why 72% of the public feels we're in a recession right now, even though technically we're not. So I'm not a doctor, but you know, one of the, I think the, the rules that we have in medicine is do no harm. So just in terms of that question, Mr. Furman, to what end do, do you or the administration, what thoughts have you given, um, what analysis have you provided, or do you acknowledge that the cumulative effect of a lot of regulations on small, on medium, on large businesses has had on a lack of productivity growth and, and the effect that that is having now on a lower standard of living in the United States? Um, thank you for your question, and I think you're right to identify productivity as one of the biggest challenges our economy faces. An analysis by the San Francisco Fed put the date at around 2004 when productivity growth started to slow. It's something we've seen, as I've said, in other contexts across a range of other countries. The United States, and one of the reasons I'm optimistic about the United States, is over the last 10 years we have had the fastest productivity growth of any of the other G7 economies, but we certainly have not had enough. As you said, that places a big role in terms of what future we can expect for wage growth. And so I think the most important question is what steps can we take? I would suggest um, expanding markets abroad through steps like TPP, reforming our business tax system, lowering the rate and reforming the base, investing more in infrastructure, investing more in um, research and development, our, and bringing down our deficit to free up you know, more private capital for investment are five really important steps we could take to increase our productivity growth. And, and I would agree, tax reform, expanded trade opportunities, sell more American goods and services overseas, get the money back home. But what about the regulatory environment? I mean, do you acknowledge or do you, have you done analysis just on the weight of regulations from a cumulative effect that that has actually had? I mean, it's a consistent message that I hear from my employers that I visit with in Minnesota all the time. I don't think, the, I think it's very important to get regulations right, and one of our jobs at CEA is to participate in the process by which executive branch regulations are reviewed, and we take that responsibility very seriously and work hard to get the benefits as high relative to the costs as you possibly can. Often that means doing regulations in a way that is flexible, that uses market mechanisms. And I think if you do that, it can be consistent with a stronger economy and strong productivity growth. 